Welcome back. I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you control by making pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape, which you explore from inside the Clomper, gathering resources and completing quests. That sounds like fun. Go wishlist on Steam. Progress since my last video has been a little slow because I did this to this with this. It was just an accident. 70 mile an hour face lawnmower. Pretty dangerous. But I'm recovered now. Everything's back to normal. I got pretty lucky. Let me introduce you to the new inventory. Now this book has a lot of tabs and a lot of functionality eventually, but I've got to do it bit by bit. Let's look at the pipes first. There'll be a lot of pipes in Clomper, 100, maybe 200 pipes. And you'll see here that I've got just three down in the grid. Now there are only five in the game at the moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are only five and yet I've got a grid that can support hundreds. For any given pipe, you're gonna have a name. You're gonna have some dimensions here. We've got two and two for the bend and we've got a cost. So I need to have that information ready for the player. But that's all very well if there were three or five pipes, but what, what about when there are 100? Well, I'm gonna have this thing called sorting, filtering, and paging. Now I'm a web developer by trade, so the idea of sorting, paging, and filtering is my bread and butter. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but filters will go down the side, as will sorting, and then paging will be down here at the bottom. And you'll be able to move around with either the mouse, the scroll wheel, or the WASD keys, or game controller when I get that far. Along the top here are the other functions that I'm gonna have eventually in this book, but that's not really inventory, it's not for now. The other important feature is the scrap. Now scrap is the resource that you'll use to spend. So when you're working out what pipes you wanna put down, you'll need to know how much they're gonna cost and then how much scrap you've actually got in the tank. Whether I include this dial that tells you exactly how much or whether I have a thermometer that gives you an idea of how much, I'm not sure. I quite like the idea of not being very specific about how many resources you have and therefore not sort of counting every single resource. But I think that also might make it very hard for certain types of player and those that like to get things absolutely maximum efficiency. So we'll see. So the order in which I'm gonna do this is I'll start with the grid, being able to show pipes, that's the most obvious thing, and then filtering, ordering, paging. Let's jump over to Unity and see where I'm at. So here it is, the book, and you can see the grid of pipes laid out. Looks a bit weird at the moment because I only have five different types of pipe and I needed more to test. So I just duplicate the tea pipe for people who like tea. You like tea, don't you? I don't, <laughs> the only Englishman on the planet who doesn't. The thing along the bottom is the new tool. I'll come back to that in a minute. The general idea is that you select the pipe that you're after. Let's jump round to the valve here. Select it, and then you can choose where on your tool you want it to go. Let's say that we want it to be here. And then you can go back and select another pipe and set it up exactly how you want it. Let's say you're part of the bend crew and you want to have bends all the way along. Well, you can completely do that too. Not sure why you'd want to, but you can. Let's set it back up to how I had it so I can demonstrate the next bit. This is a bit clunky. It does need some work. With the inventory closed, you can see the tool is there on the right hand side. Now I wanted to replace the hotbar because I want the UI to be diegetic, which means that things are real in the game world rather than sort of hovering over the top like you get with most UIs. The hotbar looked a little bit out of place, but it was only supposed to be temporary anyway, so I didn't mind getting rid of it. Now the tool does need some work. It's taking up rather a lot of screen real estate and when I move around it sort of is fixed and that looks a bit weird. I also don't like the chromatic aberration. You can see that in the bottom right hand corner when I select the switch here. It sort of looks fuzzy and weird. That's a camera effect, but I don't think it should really be appearing on the tool. It looks too odd, but it works. Now for deleting pipes, I used to have that on the hotbar, which felt kind of weird, but I just needed to put it somewhere. So I've now moved that into a special mode of its own. So with a button click, I can now enter delete mode and delete pipes to my heart's content just like before. Let's look at how I've architected this in Unity. So the inventory you can see is hovering out here in the middle of nowhere outside the main clomper. The green square is showing you the volume of the clomper where most of the 
UI effects and so forth happen. And you see this is outside in its own scene. And because it's in its own scene, it has its own camera. You can see the render type is set to overlay. And that means that you have the main camera that you're looking out of. And then what this camera takes overlays on the top of that. The projection is orthographic, which means there's no perspective. Not sure I'm entirely happy with that, but I can experiment with graphics later. I must do graphics later, bare minimum first, get the systems in. The inventory itself is split up into a number of objects. I have a couple of lights because it sits outside of the main volume of the clomper, so it needs its own lighting. I have a game object which includes the two models, one for the cover and one for the pages. And then I have these two weird things, one's the registry and the other's the grid. Now you see for the grid, I only have two options. I have left and right. Those are the starting points for the grids. All the pipes are laid out equally across those two areas. And then I have this thing called a registry. Now to help you understand how this all works, let's pop over to a drawing. So we have this book and on the book, you have an imaginary grid. I'm just going to put them in as crosses, but you can imagine them as squares or boxes. I use crosses because they're just easier to draw. We also have a whole bunch of pipes and they all look a bit like this. And we have a whole bunch more pipes, probably about 100. So these pipes are currently stored on disk. So how do I get the pipes from somewhere inside the game onto the grid? Where the pipes are loaded into to start with is known as the registry. And they're actually loaded in, but they're outside the view of the camera, so you can't see them. Then when the inventory opens, all the game does is move the pipes from where they are in the registry into the inventory itself. Now, at the moment, they have a fixed order. So it will put the unit in there and it will put the bend in, which I haven't drawn, but it will put the bend in second and then the T-pipe next and so on and so forth as you go through. So when the player wants to do some ordering or paging or filtering to find that pipe that they're after, the specific one that they know exists or one that they hope exists to fit their problem, then what happens is, is it moves the pipes out of the inventory back to the registry and then performs the filtering and ordering in the registry before putting them back. Now I know this is going to be pretty quick because all I'm doing is moving game objects about. I'm not spawning them at runtime or anything like that. They already exist, so it should be pretty fast, even for 100. I'm not gonna go into the details of paging and ordering and filtering. I think there's some cool stuff in there, but that's for the next video when I actually have something to show. I'll come back to it, promise. There's one other architectural thing I want to mention, but for that, let's get back into Unity. So to explain the next decision, let's look at how pipes are actually set up in Clomper. I have a resources folder and each of the pipes is an item in the resources folder. As you can see here, I've got T T1, T2, T3. They're just for testing. They're going to go away. Each of these is a prefab. Let's look at the bend. This is how a typical pipe is made up. And it's quite complicated. First of all, we have the steam ports and those are the things you connect to. And within those you have the steam that gets pushed out the end, which is not only a visual effect, but also a collider that if you step into, you get pushed, which is a bit of fun. And we have creation triggers. This is for when you are looking at the pipe, say you want to delete it, then you've got to look at one of these triggers and it will delete it. Then you've got the physics colliders. Those colliders, when you're running around inside the clomper, this is what the physics engine interacts with. And you have the model, fair enough, nothing too complicated there. And you have a whole bunch of UI. On the bend itself, you've got all of these different scripts that are all for tracking health and debugging and materials. And there's a lot there. All that functionality isn't needed by the inventory. And I could do a thing where I strip all of it off, but that started to get really complicated fast. So instead, I have an inventory folder. I may regret this in the future having to, but for now, I think it'll work. So if we pop over to the inventory bend, it looks the same, it kind of has to, because it has the same 3D model that's shared between them. Otherwise, it's a completely different object. So it felt right that this one should be much simpler. Now in the future, when I'm having to manage a hundred of these things, I might decide to only have one pipe and go back to the old way of doing it. But for now, pretty happy with this, seems to be working. Another useful architectural tip that's worth knowing is that behind the scenes, I have a player state machine. Now a state machine is a way of controlling what you can and can't do. 
and also what you can and can't do next. So for example, right now, I'm in the create mode, so I can lay pipes, I can select new pipes, and I can delete pipes. All good. I can also change the values of switches and valves, and I can interact with handles. Although that one doesn't want to interact. It's cheeky. There you go. Now it will do. If I open up the inventory, I now don't want to be able to interact with lots of things. I want to be able to just do the inventory stuff, so I've moved into a new state. Now that sort of captures all of the mouse and keyboard commands. So what happens then if I pick up a quest, and here's the new quest look, and then I press I for inventory. I'm pressing I to open up the inventory, and it doesn't open. And that's because the state I'm in now is looking at a quest. If I close the quest tube, then I still can't open the inventory because I'm holding the quest tube. So I have to look at the quest port, pop it in there, and now you can see I can open and close the inventory. The same goes for being in the periscope. If I turn the periscope on there and I come over here, I can go in and out of the periscope, but I can't open the inventory when I'm inside the periscope. That's the state machine that's coding that. Now it's not perfect. There are some bugs. Do you want to see some bugs? You want to see some bugs. So for example, if I'm looking at the pipe and I open up the inventory, you can still see the mouse tooltip. Mm, that's not quite right. If I'm holding the quest tube and I hit I for inventory and then pop it back in, you see the tool is now at the bottom, but the inventory is not open because I hit the inventory button while I was holding the quest tube and you can't do that. So yeah, there are some bugs. I'm still working on this. State Machine also controls things like the reticule and that's the little white dot that you'll see right in the center of the screen. So when I open the inventory, it disappears. And when I grab a quest, it disappears, but then comes back when I've closed it. So you can see it disappears and it reappears. The state machine controls that. In the last video, I announced the Steam page and I said, go wishlist, and I was absolutely delighted. But I had no trailer, but I do now. Go and check it out. I won't tack it onto the end of here. Pop into the Steam page, go and watch the trailer. It's got Karen Tingley's beautiful music over the top, and although it is still ugly as hell, it's very, very cool. In the Discord, we've had people posting fan art, their own takes on the Clomper. I cannot tell you how lovely it is to see fan art of the Clomper. So we've had sad cherries with this lovely little piece and aberrant curse with theirs extremely talented and somewhat putting me to shame but thank you very much both it's absolutely lovely can't tell you how nice it is to be working on new features again even if they are just a little bit janky <laughs> so that's where we are at time of recording thank you so much for joining me on the journey it's lovely to have so many regulars back to come and say hello let me know down in the comments whether you think the inventory is going in the right direction. I'm very keen to hear. If you like the look of this, go and wishlist on Steam. And until next time, bye bye.